Hey everybody, welcome to the first installment in a brand new series I'm doing on my channel, which I, I hope I'm going to keep up with as, as time goes on. I'm going to call it First Time Spins, and that's basically going to mean that these are albums that I've never heard before by uh, different artists. I'm playing them in their entirety for my first time, and I figured I'd give you uh, some opinions on them, good or bad. They're going to be controversial at times, and uh, I'm, I'm interested in the comments as long as they're respectful, uh, if you disagree. Um, these are four records this time that I have, and one of them here is a bona fide classic album, so I'm going to be saving that for later on. Um, it should be a lot of fun. Let's see. Um, first album. Johnny Cash sings Hank Williams. This is, uh, first time I've heard this album, and I've been getting a real hankering for Johnny Cash lately. Uh, I, I don't know why, but, uh, I, I, you know, I never really appreciated the country music much, and I still am not a big fan of it, but uh, I like some artists, some songs, and uh, I I love this album. I I adore this album. I, I liked every track on it. Uh, love the sound of Johnny Cash's voice. Uh, he loved the guitar. Just love the presence he has. It, 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 I couldn't get enough of it. I couldn't wait to hear the next song. Um, I'll be playing this album a lot. Love the sound quality on this album. This is a stereo copy, but it was so crisp and clean sounding uh, for for its time. Really sounded <clears throat> pretty good for an older album. Um, I bought this mainly because it has I Walk the Line on it, which is a song that I knew. I don't know many Johnny Cash songs, uh, just the ones you, you would be associated with. So I really have to get familiar with that. Um, <clears throat> didn't know that... Uh, some of these songs were Hank Williams. Um, on the back it says Johnny Cash sings Hank Williams and other favorite tunes. Uh, love to hear the version of Hey Good Looking on here that he does, which I you know, and I Love You Because, an interesting song. The song uh, Folsom Prison Blues, I didn't realize I knew that song. I, I, when, I, when I heard it, it was very familiar to me. I, I know the song. I didn't didn't really know what it was. I mean, some of the lines uh, resonated because I'd heard them before. But uh, I'm looking forward to spending a lot more time with Johnny Cash, The Man in Black. This is really, really a surprise and a uh, great album to start out with. as my first Johnny Cash album that I've ever heard. Thumbs up for this album. Johnny Cash sings Hank Williams. Okay, next album is by one of the most important artists in music of all time. Elvis Presley. And this album is Harem Scarum. It's his uh, movie soundtrack in 1960s uh, stuff. Uh, he had all kinds of uh, movies in the 1960s. Um, we know the story of his career in the films in the 60s. Um, he went downhill, did a lot of poor movies. But I got to say, I, I enjoy a lot of the movies that Elvis did in the 60s because I take them in the spirit in which they're intended. Just silly crazy farces some of them beach blanket bingo type things where elvis has a lot of pretty girls around him sings a lot of corny songs and some of the songs are good i remember when i watched the movie of harem scarum um i thought that the movie wasn't as bad as i would have thought by the title a silly title but as far as his crazy 60s movies goes it wasn't wasn't too unenjoyable from what i remember um the music though is something else this is a terrible album um I really did disliked the entire album. I could salvage one song here called So Close Yet So Far From Paradise, which I thought was the, the only decent song here. But for the most part on this album, Elvis sounds like he's not having a good time. He knows that he's singing songs here that are really beneath him. And uh, I mean, I, I could even take silly movie songs. Sometimes they don't work as studio tracks. Like you, you know, it's not like you're going in to just record a new studio album. You're going in to record a movie soundtrack. I mean. The example I always use is, in The Wizard of Oz, you take any one of those songs, uh, The Lollipop Kids or uh, If I Only Had a Brain, and you just take them out of the context of the film, and they're ridiculous. But put them in the context of the movie, and they, they kind of work sometimes. But as a listening experience, terrible album. Really bad. It's not an album I'll play much, if at all. I'm going to keep this in my collection, though. I mean, I'm an Elvis collector, and this is a, an original. And uh, I paid a little more than it's, worth, than it's worth as far as sound quality goes. I mean, it's got this insert in here of Elvis from the movie as a, a chic. And that's rare. And uh, as, as a collector's piece in my collection, 
I'll hold on to it. Thumbs down, though. The album. I mean, it's just terrible. Is yeah. You know, some of his movies soundtracks aren't that bad, actually. Now to something totally different at a left field. I'm a fan of the old TV sitcom, The Odd Couple, starring Tony Randall and Jack Klugman. Well, Tony Randall put out a series of albums. This is before he did The Odd Couple. Uh, this one's called uh, Tony Randall, Warm and, and Wavery. And uh, it's got Tony on there singing all kinds of, by this time, I guess, cheesy old standards. And uh, that's part of why I enjoyed the album. I like this album. I had a good time with it. I played it. My girlfriend liked it, too. I think maybe for the wrong reasons, though, because, because I think of the character of Felix Unger. When I play an album with Tony Randall on it, I, I laugh, and I find it hilarious, unintentionally so. I don't think that was what he intended when he made the record. But um, if you ever watch the show when Felix gets together with his band, the Sophisticados, and does a lot of corny numbers, and he sings them as though he's like this greatest talent, that's what I got, I got, I got a kick out of it. He's not a bad singer, but it's funny as hell if you're familiar with the, the show. So I enjoyed this kind of as a comical thing. He does old standards on here like uh, Me and My Shadow, um, Chinatown, My Chinatown, Red Sails in the Sunset, You're Blase, You Ought to Be in Pictures, and uh, one that really had me laughing. Well, the title is, is hysterical, and so is the song. It's called When Banana, wait a minute, when Banana Skins Are Falling, I'll Come Sliding Back to You. <laughs> it was really a riot. Uh, this is a fun album to have a good time with. So I give it a thumbs up for Tony Randall. Whoever would have thought. Okay, the last album is the one that uh, I've been waiting for. I'm really excited to talk about. It's a classic. It's on uh, very many people's greatest albums of all time list, sometimes number one. And it's this album, which I've never heard before, The Beach Boys' Pet Sounds. Um, now, here's the hard part. This is one of the worst albums I've ever heard in my life. And when I say that, I don't just say that generalizing or just throwing that away. You know, people tend to do that at times. If they hate something, this is the worst thing I've ever heard. If they love something, oh, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. No, I literally mean this is one of the worst albums I've ever heard, and it's hard for me to say that, and I know there are a lot of Beach Boys fans out there that are going to be put off, and uh, let's let's discuss it if you want. Um, I, I didn't like a single song off this album, except for Wouldn't It Be Nice. Um... Uh, I, I, I know uh, God only knows. Well, l let me let me not be too harsh there. Again, I don't want to go to the extreme just for the sake of it. God only knows. You know, I knew the song before this. Uh, it's never been one of my favorite songs, but in this album, it's one of the more tolerable songs. Sloop John B., I knew that song going in. Uh, but And Wouldn't It Be Nice is probably uh, the only song here that I really, really like. And even that's not one of my favorites. I think, folks, that when it comes to the Beach Boys... It's going to be one of those cases where they're, they're a band that, that I just like the hits from, in their case. Um, I don't think I'm going to go much for the studio albums. And I have in, up in those shelves several Beach Boys albums, studio albums uh, that I bought to have and play and see. But uh, it'll be interesting to know if I like any of them because this one just didn't do it for me. And I know how classic it's supposed to be. I'd like to know how. I got the feeling that every song on this album was just a lot of filler and just like it, I, I heard that Brian Wilson when he made the album he made it in 65 and it was released in May of 66 he said I'm gonna make the greatest album ever made the greatest album of all time it just sounds like he's doing a lot of tinkering in the studio and I guess for the time that was new and innovative I mean just a lot of noise a lot of different instruments a lot of different sounds I don't know what's supposed to be so psychedelic about this album. I've heard that uh, this is like the first psychedelia album, really, or the birth of psychedelia. Don't hear it. Just don't hear it, guys. And the cover. Is that psychedelic? What the hell is that? Feeding animals at the zoo? I mean, what the heck? How, how uh, earth-shattering and mind-altering is that? I, it just... Every song I couldn't wait to end on here, guys. Uh, and... Every song sounded really like had an abrupt ending. Like let's just finish it off and get over get it over with. It, it 
There's no flow to this. The music's just not here for me. I just don't hear anything I can remember. I don't go away and say, wow, that blew me away, that track, or wow, that was something I never heard. My ears are just really went wild. And I never heard anything like that. Garbage. And uh, I'll never play this album again. In fact, even though I'm going to keep the Harum Scarum Elvis album, I will get rid of this album. Um, I'm not going to... I would ordinarily think about maybe trading it to somebody who would, would appreciate it or, or if they want it or selling it somewhere. But the, in all fairness, even though the copy of this album that I got seemed to be in really excellent shape by the looks of it, when I played it, there were a lot of crackles and pops and it just sounded awful. And... Uh, in addition to the album being awful, and I'm, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to give that to somebody. It's not worth it. So I'm probably going to just put this in a pile, give it back to my record store guy, uh, give him a bunch of freebies that I don't want. Maybe he can resell them, you know. Um, you know, it's tough to come down on an album like this. It's really good. I just don't see what the. I've got some notes here. Uh, you know, I went online just to see if I wasn't the only one out there who was crazy and. Uh, I looked up this album, I just put in, in Google, I put uh, Pet Sound Sucks, just to see what would come up. And I came up with a, a review of a bunch of classic albums and uh, that somebody thought was over overrated. And under this one, he had a quote, which I think sums it up for me. He said, Pet Sounds is rock and roll's most highly polished turd. Sorry, folks. This is a historic moment. This is the first time I've ever heard this album. I'm always going to remember. Where was I when I heard Pet Sounds for the first time? What did I think? I don't share the opinion of so many other people that were blown away by this album. And the uh, chief one being Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney went on, on record as saying, uh, remember, I think in 1980 he had an, an audio interview, and he said, uh, Pet Sounds uh, blew me away. One of the Still does, he says today, uh, one of the greatest albums of all time. And he thought, this is the greatest album of all time. What the hell are we going to do to top it, you know? No problem there. And again, this is not me trying to just uh, snub everybody else at the expense of glorifying the Beatles, but they came up with Sgt. Pepper a year later and knocked this out of the water. I mean, come on. That's psychedelia. That's interesting sounds and innovations. That's songs you can remember and things that after you listen to it for the first time, you're like, wow, what was that? I'll never forget it. You know, talking about the 60s, I could see that. But this, whew, oh my God. Folks, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Sorry, Beach Boys fans. I just, I just, I feel bad that I'm so underwhelmed by this album. Nothing worse than hating an album or, or a movie or anything that everybody loves and you just can't get what it is about it that everybody raves about. If we ever had a contest or a thread discussion of, you know, what's your all-time overrated albums, man, this is number one. I can't think of anything else that could even approach it. This was a, com a commercial failure in the U.S., I found out. No wonder why. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't get it. Concept album? What concept? Nothing flows together on this. It's just a bunch of sound effects and filler and half-baked songs that don't even resonate. Needless to say, Beach Boys, Pet Sounds, thumbs down, guys. Sorry.